Welcome to Lunchbox Sessions, bite-sized industrial training. Hello, this is Carl from lunchboxsessions.com, and this will be a brief tutorial on charge pressure as it relates to closed-loop hydrostatic pumps. Charge pressure is important. It is what allows you to boost the pressure on the inlet side of the main pump to make sure that the pump does not cavitate. After all, the inlet hose for a hydrostatic pump is generally considered to be too long and too skinny because it comes all the way back from the motor, not just from the tank close by, no. So keeping the inlet of a hydrostatic pump boosted, keeping that pressure boosted is important. That's one job that is carried out by the charge pump. And the other job the charge pump carries out is a replenishment function. It forces extra oil into the closed loop, which means that oil is also being forced out through the hot oil shuttle to head back to the tank for cooling. So the charge pump has an important job to perform. It's not uncommon on large industrial systems to have a separate gauge just keeping track of charge pressure so that an operator can inspect from time to time and make sure that things are normal. If the charge pressure was to fall too low, if the charge pump was to fail, there would be potential for catastrophic damage in the main hydrostatic pump or in the main motor being driven by the pump. So charge pump pressure is important. That's why there is often the separate gauge. A common question that gets asked in some hydrostatic systems is why does the pressure on the charge pressure gauge seem to drop a little bit when the main pump is displacing fluid as opposed to when the pump is in neutral. Let me show you what I mean. Right now our charge pressure gauge is reading 260 psi. If I return the operating lever to the neutral position, watch that charge pressure gauge. Ah, it went up to 300 psi. And we're not turning the motor right now, and in fact both sides of the main loop up here on the A loop gauge, 300 psi, and same pressure on the bottom of the loop, also 300 psi. So all gauges are currently reading the same value and no coincidence to find out that that is the setting of the charge pump relief valve. That's generally a relief valve that is internal to the hydrostatic drive case and somewhere inside there may be an adjustment screw on the outside but there it is a 300 psi setting for the charge pump relief valve and the alternative terminology replenishment pump, replenishment pressure, replenishment relief valve is also valid. I'll just stick with charge pressure. So right now our charge pressure gauge is reading the setting of the relief valve that is open for that smaller charge pump. There's nowhere else for the flow to go right now because when the pump's displacement is put in neutral the charge pump pushes against the A and the B side of the loop but unless there is some internal leakage on the A or the B side of the loop there really isn't much flow moving through those check valves, really isn't any at all, but the A and the B side loop will remain pressured at the charge pump rate. There's no oil leaving the hot oil shuttle at this time. Why? Because the same pressure from the A side of the loop is piloting the hot oil shuttle as the same pressure from the B side of the loop. So it's being held in its center position and as you can see by looking at the hot oil shuttle, it is a closed center valve. So there's nowhere else for the charge pump flow to go at this time other than over the charge pump relief valve. It's not a very large source of heat because the flow rate through it is not that great. It is perhaps somewhere in the neighborhood of 10% of the total volume that is displaced by the main pump when it is in full displacement mode. It is a source of heat, but just not a very large one. It is normal to have this flow over the charge pump relief when the main pump is in neutral displacement, zero displacement position. But again, we'll notice that the charge pressure value on the charge pressure gauge will drop a little bit when we put the pump into displacement mode and some people become alarmed by that drop in pressure when there really isn't any need to be. Basically, all that has happened is that the charge pump relief valve has closed. Well, if the charge pump relief valve closed, that must mean there's an easier path somewhere. Indeed, there is. If we follow the charge pump flow 
and find out that is being used to replenish and charge the return side of the closed loop, that's normal. We find out that the pressure on the return side of the closed loop is being held at 260 by the hot oil shuttle relief valve over here on the right side of the circuit. It's set to 260. It needs to be set a little bit lower than the charge pump relief valve, otherwise you will not have fluid leaving the main hydrostatic loop for returning to tank where it can be cooled. So it's important to let fluid out of the hydrostatic loop and in fact the flow from the charge pump has to go somewhere. So that is why the charge pump pressure gauge reads 260 psi and not 300 for this particular system when the lever that adjusts pump displacement is forcing the pump to put out a displacement, in this case, on the main A side of the loop. I hope that makes sense. It's about the path of least resistance. It's either the hot oil relief valve that is the lower path of resistance when the shuttle is in position to bleed flow out of the loop, or it's the charge pump relief valve that is the path of least resistance when the hot oil shuttle is back in center position. On some hydraulic systems, the difference between the charge pump relief and the hot oil shuttle relief may be much closer together yet. And so in some cases, it's not that noticeable on the charge pressure gauge. And so the operator doesn't notice it, but it is pretty normal to notice that needle on the charge pressure gauge to drop at least a tiny little bit when the pump is in drive. Hey, I hope you found that useful. Thanks for watching. We have hundreds of interactive resources like this live schematic, so you can try out your wild ideas without blowing anything up. Get started at lunchboxsessions.com.